All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Bob's Panic Box mod, which is being made by form user Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is an amazing tool which will automate the abort action group to trigger when certain catastrophic criteria are met. And I Love this mod, it's going to save so many of my Kerbals, but before we can actually take a look at things in our save file, we have to have a gander at some settings. So when you do install this mod, you're going to have to go into Start New Game and to Difficulty Options and into the Bob's Panic Box button here because of a very strange option for this. When you install it, by default, you actually can't use the mod because to use it, you have to hit a button to bring up the UI. You cannot bring up said button unless you show it to be active in these settings here. So this first column allows that button to be seen in the launch scene, in the vehicle assembly building, and in the space plane hangar. Now we have one more option here which allows you to change options in those uh, different UI elements during flight. Right now, you can only change these various criteria for activating the abort action group in either the VAB or space plane hangar. Hopefully that does get implemented soon, but for now you cannot change it on the fly in flight. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully that happens eventually. Now, the middle column here, as I did mention briefly, is the different criteria to actually activate the abort action group, which we're going to gloss over here momentarily because, well, we're going to go through all of them in detail in our save file in a second. And the final column is where that button actually is. Will it be in the part action menu or will it be on the toolbar? You get to choose either or, you know, both. It's it's completely up to you. So with at least either the VAB or space plane hanger selected and at least one of these chosen, now, now you can actually play around with this mod. So let's go back into our Bob's Panic Box save file here and jump right into the VAB to take a look at how you do use this. And let's load up my crappily built uh, rocket here for testing and start by talking briefly about the abort action group because that is what this mod activates. So whatever you have here in the abort action group is what will trigger when something bad happens. Which is wonderful because that means this mod is basically compatible with every parts mod out there because so long as it can go into an action group, this mod can activate it. And that is just good. So how does it activate things? Well, let's head down to our button, which is down here with the Bob's Panic Box button. And that brings up our Bob's Panic Box UI, which let's reset the defaults here for a moment. I was testing just before starting this video. And our first option here is, of course, to even if we want this to be active at all, which, hey, for this video, we do. So we'll turn that on. And the first of the trigger criteria is arm explosion detection. The most basic of Kerbal catastrophes, an explosion. If this mod detects something on your ship going kaboom, it will activate the abort action group. And that's a good thing. The next is the negative velocity limit, and this will trigger the abort action group if your ship starts to plummet back down to terra firma. And it calculates this by a negative speed in meters per second. The default number is 40, but you can change that up to 100 meters per second or down to even one meter per second, which seems a bit too sensitive considering, well, Frankly, you could probably get that while staging. So let's, uh, for testing here on this video, let's put it to about 20 for ease of activation. And uh, that should be good. Now the next is the high G limit, which will activate the abort action group when you hit a certain number of Gs. Which you can set all the way down to one 
or all the way up to six. By default, it, or up to 10, rather. The default, the default is six, which is what was in my head there. And you'll be good to go. Now, the last one is the max angle of attack, which is there to basically keep your rocket from tumbling end over end. Well, rather, it's not there to keep it from happening, just activate the abort action group if it does. Now, by default, it's set to 20 degrees, so if your ship tips over 20 degrees, it'll set off. But you can bring that all the way down to 10, or all the way up to 179, which, oh boy, at that point, oh yeah, you are tumbling and need help. But let's, uh, let's set that back to its default down here at 20, and it should be good to go. And then we have the next options here, which are rather magnificent as well. You don't always want these different criteria to trigger. Specifically, say the negative velocity limit. If you're actually done with your mission and returning your capsule back down to the ground, you don't want the negative velocity to trigger, because yeah, you're falling back down to the earth now. Well, more rather, Kerbin. But you know, you don't want that to go. So, you can set a time limit to when these will no longer trigger. And so this option allows you to disable this mod after the flight time exceeds a certain number of seconds. By default, it's 600 seconds, but you can bring it all the way down to 10, and in fact, you can actually type in this box to, frankly, whatever you want. So that is very useful. And another useful thing is, well, once that time's out and the abort triggers will no longer work, Maybe you want something to happen, and that's our next option, to trigger a custom action group once the flight time does exceed that 600 seconds. And you can set that to none, or between custom action group 1 and 10. Now, personally, I actually haven't really seen much of a use for this, but that's just me. I'm sure you guys could think of a thousand uses to actually activate a command or custom action group at a specific time. That's probably very useful. I just can't think of it. And then our last options here have to do with what happens after it does trigger the abort. So what if, say for instance, we have an explosion. This capsule suddenly has the abort happen. This decouples the separatrons and the escape system fire, and now our capsule's flying through the air. Well, we kind of want the parachutes to come out after that happens, and that's what we can do. We can trigger an action after the abort. And again, it can either be none or custom action group one through 10, whichever you do prefer. And it will delay that triggering for a certain amount of time. By default, 10 seconds, but you can bring that up to 60 or again, type in here to do whatever you want. And it's pretty clear that uh, Linux Guru Gamer figured you were gonna use parachutes with this particular uh, option because the last thing here is to delay this activation till after you reach a speed that's safe for parachutes to open up. Because, well, yeah, you may not have to abort till you're already going pretty fast. If you open your chutes, they're gonna get ripped apart. So with this checkbox selected, well, that won't happen. It will wait until you slow down and then activate the parachutes. And that, that is a good thing. And then of course we have our final two things here of resetting everything to defaults and closing if we're done. Now let's actually turn on the arm explosion and the negative velocity limit to do a little bit of testing here and show off how this does work. So let's set that up again to about 20. There we go, and let us launch our... Ooh, no, I need to go back real quick. I need to go back because there was something else I was going to show you. And of course... Of course I forgot, but while we're here, we can take a look at a thing. Now, if we ever are uncertain, as I currently just was, as to what we set the triggers to, we have that button here again, so we can click it and see what all we had done. And I remembered to do the explosion and the negative velocity limit, but I forgot to turn back on the after abort trigger action. So uh, what we have to do, of course, since we sadly cannot change it here, at least yet, 
is we do have to revert flight back to the vehicle assembly building to reset this. So we'll just go in here, add on action group one, which is where my parachute is. We'll keep the 10 seconds, that should be fine. Close and off we go. So back to the launch pad and I'm, I could say that that was intentional to show you the other box and how you gotta go back, but it wasn't. You all know that's a fact. So yes, let's just uh, throttle up, turn on the SAS, and fire our rockets in a three, two, one. And we're only gonna get a little bit off the ground because then I'm gonna cut the engines and it's gonna explode. There we go. The explosion triggered the activation. I am gonna actually tilt us up so we're not falling so fast. And in a second, our parachute should open automatically. There they go. Perfect. 10 seconds after launch. Granted, we didn't really get very high, so they didn't really get a chance to work, but they did open. So we exploded, the launch system worked, and then parachutes opened. And all was well. So let's actually revert flight back to launch and show off the negative velocity limit now. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, throttle up, turn on SAS, and I'm gonna take my hands off the keyboard. I'm gonna let it get up uh, to a couple hundred feet just to make sure we drop quickly enough. And then I'm just gonna cut the engines. And so I will not touch my controls after that. So let's get it up to about 300 meters. That should probably be more than enough, frankly. And cut the engines, my hands are off the keyboard. Let's see what happens. Let's wait until we get down to negative 20. There we go, we have launched. We get the indication up here. Oh God, I am actually am gonna tilt this up so we're not heading straight for the ground. Ooh, we exploded. And in a moment, the parachutes, there they go, have opened. But again, we weren't high enough to, you know, let them work. Ooh, yeah, that probably is something I should have accounted for. We probably should have gone up a little bit further or I should have corrected the flight a little bit more soon. But let's head back to the vehicle assembly building and now switch it up to do the max angle of attack. Now I didn't do this before because when uh, the explosion happens and it hits the launch pad, the angle of attack sometimes activates because you know, the ship tilts and it goes wonky. And so uh, yes, let's do that one now. So angle of attack, let's go to launch. We will throttle up and fire right as things are opening up to show uh, this one, SAS, fire. And yeah, right now there are no other things that could happen to trigger us besides the angle of attack. So let's get up a bit and I'm gonna start angling the ship forward and about 20 degrees, we should fire. So let's reach it somewhere in here, there it goes. And we have exceeded the 20 degrees, we have fired, and briefly, our parachute should open. In a second, there it goes, wonderful! And whew, there goes our poor, poor rocket. Now I'm gonna revert flight one more time to show off, of course, the final one, the exceed G-forces. But uh, <laughs> this ship's definitely not gonna work. So let's uh, let's lower it down to three Gs. That should be good. And yeah, what the heck? Let's throw some extra things on here real quick. I need I need coupling. I need coupling. There we go. That should be more than enough. Add some extra engines in here. That's the wrong category again. Oh my, my, my. There we go. And pop that on. And yeah, let's. Uh, that should be actually be fine. Let's save, go out to launch, and activate, hopefully, if we reach 4Gs. I'm pretty sure four engines should get us to 4Gs. If not, we'll have to go back in briefly. But throttle up and... Oh no, nothing happened, we're too heavy. Cut that engine. And there we go. Ah, oh, crap, that's, uh, yeah, we were just under, we're just under. Uh, that's four right there and the needle is just below it. Just my luck, revert tracking. Vehicle assembly building. I how did I know that was going to happen? I thought it would be fine. I thought it would be fine at four. Oh, it actually was at three. It should have that should have triggered. Let's bring it down to two. Hmm. Unless I was reading that dial wrong, which hey is always a possibility. So let us go back in and launch. 
Stage two, there it goes. Now it worked too. <laughs> Clearly I was reading that wrong. But yes, it activated. It's good to go now at 2.0422 G's. And hey, the parachutes work this time. Lovely. We will have a crew that will survive this one. Excellent. But yes, that is the Bob's Panic Box mod. A lovely little tool set to give you some more capabilities to save your Kerbals. And I love this thing. It is going to be a beautiful thing to keep Jebediah and all these guys safe and sound. And it's just a fun automated list of things to help you out. So if you'd like to check this mod out for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, folks. I hope you have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, now a good one.